Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and today I wanted to do the Modern Classics tag. So this tag was created a couple of weeks ago by Melina Reads. I'll link her channel down below. If you don't watch it, you really should because it's amazing and she loves classics and history. It's great. Anyway, um, she tagged me in this tag, so I thought that I would do it, um, especially as I'm currently hosting the 1900-1950 readathon this month, which, depending on how you class a modern classic, um, might include many modern classics. So I thought this would be a good time to do this tag, and yes, let's get straight into the questions. Question number one is, what is the definition of a modern classic to you? I really don't know, and I feel like I really change um, from day to day how I would define a modern classic. It's not actually a term that I tend to use that much, um, like in my reading goals and on my channel when I talk about things, I tend to use classic and contemporary, and when I say classic I usually mean pre-1980, and when I say contemporary I usually mean post-2000, and when something was published between 1980 and 2000, um, whether I count it as contemporary or classic depends on the book. But I wouldn't say that I like exclusively am um, calling the 20 year period between 1980 and 2000 a modern classic. I would definitely extend the term modern classic longer than that. But I don't know whether I would consider a modern classic like anything published in the whole of the 20th century or something published from like 1918 onwards, something published from 1945 onwards. I feel like something published between 1945 and 2000, I would probably be most likely to refer to as a modern classic, like if I were talking about the book, whereas something published in like 1920, I would just call a classic. But if someone were to ask me like, what's your favorite modern classic? I would probably use like the whole of the 20th century to pick from. I probably wouldn't limit myself to just post-war stuff. I don't know. I find it quite interesting, in my GCSEs at school it was required that you studied a book from before 1914 and then from after 1914, so the curriculum, however many years ago, had obviously decided that 1914 was like the cutoff between classic and modern classic, but then like at university I did a module on post-war literature from 1945 onwards, and for me that feels like modern classics. Um, but then I also feel like it would be pretty legitimate to use the whole of the 20th century as modern classics. But then also something completely different, I've noticed recently that quite a lot of publishers have released lines of modern classics that include like 21st century books, which I wouldn't really consider modern classics. Like something from 2005 to me really isn't that long ago, but like in, in 20 years time, I can't consider modern classics to be 20th century literature because then that will have been ages ago. Basically I have no idea, I don't know. For the purposes of this video I'm gonna go like vaguely 20th century. But I don't know. I mean to be honest I find like the definition of like a classic in general very interesting because I feel like some people when they say a classic they mean like something that's like canonical and really well remembered and like isn't out of print, whereas I usually use the term classic as a catch-all for like old books. But I feel like that's not what everyone means when they say classic, though that's what I mean when I say classic. Anyway, anyway, let's just move on. There are many questions in this tag and I could be stuck on this one for a long time. Question two, what is your favourite subgenre of modern classics? Um, like gothic, romantic, historical, etc. I don't know, I'm gonna say probably realist would be my favourite subgenre of modern classics. For a lot of 20th century literature I feel like my favourite thing to read in that is the kind of realist stuff about what's going on in the world at this time, and um, because I find 20th century history very interesting, um, things that kind of engage with the history and social context of the time are gonna be books that I really enjoy. I do also rather like classic crime though. By which I mostly mean I really like Agatha Christie, but I think if I expand my classic crime reading further, which I would like to, I think I would probably enjoy a lot of other crime from around the time of Agatha Christie, but I do really like Agatha Christie. Question three is, an author from the 20th century whose books you'd recommend? 
I have many, many to pick from, so I'm not just going to pick one because that would be too easy, wouldn't it? There are authors from the 20th century that I have read a lot by who I would like to recommend. Authors like Ian Forster, who I love, or Anthony Pohl, who is amazing. Then there are authors like Agatha Christie, who, as I just mentioned, I love, or P.G. Woodhouse, who's another author I've been really enjoying working my way through. I'm also a big fan of the 20th century children's author, Diana Wynne Jones, and I also very much, it's so far, I'm enjoying Daphne du Maurier. And then there are also a few authors who I've only read one or two books by, but who I'm enjoying so far and would like to read more by, such as Barbara Pym, Alice Walker, or Nella Larson. I think probably my favourite 20th century author is Ian Forster, who is an early 20th century author. But because most of his books are written in the 1910s and 1920s, I don't know... Like, obviously he's a 20th century author, but is he a modern classic author or is he just a classic author? I don't know, I don't know. Um, regardless, I love Ian Forster. However, my favourite, like, work of fiction from the 20th century has to be the Dance to the Music of Time series by Anthony Pohl, um, which I just love. Um, this is a 12 book series um, about a character called Nick, um, following his life and all the people he meets from the 1920s to the 1970s. But it's not really about him, it's just more about like all of the people that he meets and how like England changes over this time period and it's just it's just so great and so fascinating and I highly, highly recommend that. Question four is what is your favourite modern classic of the year so far? I think probably so far in 2021, bearing in mind I'm filming this at the very beginning of May before I have read all my 1900 to 1950 picks. I'm sure some of them will be new favourites. I think probably so far my favourite is The Waiting Years by Fumiko Enchi. This is a Japanese classic from the 1950s um, about a complicated family setup when the husband of the family introduced several mistresses or concubines into the house. Um, it is a really interesting and powerful read and one that I would certainly recommend. And then possibly another favourite of this year so far was Partners in Crime by Agatha Christie, which is a Tommy and Tuppence short story collection, which was just delightful and really good fun. I did also read in April um, More About Paddington by Michael Bond, which is one of the Paddington children classics um, and that was also very delightful so that has been one of the most enjoyable reads of this year so far I won't lie Paddington is wonderful. Question five a modern classic that surprised you I have two to mention here because I can never just pick one book can I um two books two American classics both by Dorothy's in fact we have Cassandra at the Wedding by Dorothy Baker and The Homemaker by Dorothy Canfield Fisher. Both of these were books that I picked up not knowing very much about them. The Homemaker because it was a Persephone classic and I always enjoy their classics and Cassandra at the Wedding just because I thought the cover was beautiful. But both of them I found incredibly powerful and interesting. The Homemaker is an American classic from the 1920s about a couple who are following very conventional gender roles until one day the husband has an accident that means that he is is bound to the house and his wife has to go out to work and they actually find that her going out to work and him being at home suits them much better. It's a really really fascinating wonderful read that I highly recommend. And then Cassandra at the Wedding is a really powerful novel about a young woman returning home for her sister's wedding but she doesn't really want her sister to get married because she can't bear the thought of losing her sister because she doesn't really know who she is without her sister and it's really psychologically complex and powerful and just a wonderful wonderful read. Question six, a modern classic that was disappointing. I've picked two again, just to be contrary, um, Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck and The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. These are two very famous books by two very famous 20th century American writers and both of them I really didn't like really didn't like at all and I really didn't get out of them what I feel like everyone else gets out of them, especially of Mice and Men. I feel like a lot of people find it really really powerful and I really really didn't. And The Old Man and the Sea, I won't lie, I feel like part of the reason why I didn't get on with this book was because I have a phobia of fish and it's all about a man chasing a big fish. I don't really know why I picked it up on reflection, it was a silly place to start with Ernest Hemingway, but yeah, both of those two books really didn't enjoy didn't see what all the fuss was about with those writers, but anyway. Question seven, a modern classic you would like to reread? For this, I have been very restrained and only picked one book, and that is The Golden Notebook by Doris Lessing. This is a novel that I read 
nine years ago and absolutely loved at the time but I don't remember very much about it except for the structure um, and it has a really fascinating structure it's all about this woman who has kind of divided her life into notebooks which are kind of different diaries or other things and um, so there's one book which is like the novel that she's writing there's one notebook that is like about her political life there's one notebook that is like about her past like I don't fully remember which notebook is which but it's all about how like she separates her life into all these different things and you have to like piece together her life from all the different notebooks. I remember really really loving it when I studied it at university but I just don't remember it that well and I would really like to reread it because I feel like it's one of those books I would enjoy even more on a reread and that I would just really like to refresh my knowledge of. Question 8 is a recent release that you think will become a modern classic in a few decades. So I picked one very recent release um, which is Hamlet by Maggie O'Farrell because I feel like this has had so much buzz and so much hype and so many people have loved it and it is a brilliant book and also it's a brilliant book that is in conversation with like a very famous writer who was already well established and I feel like it would be quite interesting to like look at Shakespeare and Hamlet as a play alongside this um, and I feel like this is the kind of book that will stand the test of time and will kind of continue to go and carry on for, well, for many many years um, but I also picked off a couple of books that are from slightly earlier um, in the 21st century that I feel like have slightly already become modern classics and if not will become so more in the future um, and that's these three books um, Small Island by Andrew Levy which is a wonderful historical novel I highly recommend from the early 2000s and um, The Luminaries by Ellen Catton which is from 2013 um, and is another incredible incredible historical fiction novel um, and then also actually another historical fiction novel um, Jonathan Strange and Mr Norrell um, by Susanna Clark. I haven't read this yet but I'm hoping to later this year. Interestingly this is actually published um, under the Bloomsbury Modern Classics imprint so they have already deemed it a modern classic. This is from 2004 like in my head that's not quite old enough to be a modern classic yet but maybe it is. Question 9 is the next modern classic on your TBR. Um, I'll link down below my TBR for the 1900s to 1950 readathon because I'm going to be reading a lot of modern classics this month um, if you're counting that time period as modern classics um, but I think the next one I'm going to pick up is this this is A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith this is an American classic from the 1940s and one that I'm really looking forward to reading and I'm participating in a read-along of this hosted by Marissa from Blatantly Bookish and Kate Howe I think this is about a family growing up in early 20th century America and I'm sure it will be a really interesting read. Finally question 10 is to tag three other classics fans. I'm going to tag four because as I said I am contrary. I'm going to tag Jen at the Librarian, Marissa from Blatantly Bookish, Petra Yu and Claudia from the Spencer's Library, all of whom I know enjoy a good classic and modern classic. And that is all for now. Um, let me know down in the comments um, what your favourite modern classic is and how you would define a modern classic because I think this is a really interesting topic and that's all for now thank you very much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video